Man, I'm nervous about these episodes. I don't know what to expect. <laughs> Except for tragedy. I expect tragedy. So big boy birdie. Throwing fire bombs. Hanji's location. Armin thrust into the role of leader. What now? Uh, he's not okay. Yeah. Just don't destroy the basement. This would be a good time for Aaron to get mad. Oh no. Armin. Oh no, he's losing it. That hurts so bad from Armin, who always knows what to do. I don't know if that's true. Oh, that actually seems like a very sound choice. Good order. Maybe he just needs some space to breathe. This is a big thing for Armin, too, because his hesitation was one of his biggest problems in the beginning of the series, and he's worked through that. But this is something else. This is a whole different thing. But yeah, I can finally watch the opening. Reiner and Bertholdt. Reiner and Bertholdt. Hurts me. That stuff <laughs> seems revealing, but it goes by so fast. The outside world and the basement. Animation-wise, it's great. I think it's my least favorite song, though, so far. Although, it might just be because it follows Red Swan, <laughs> which is, like, my all-time favorite ever. So, yeah, last episode was a big sucker punch. I'm still kind of reeling from it. It's really tough to see a way out of this that's that's good. It's so amazingly done, though, this whole setup. It feels like a finale. It feels like this is the end of the scouts and that this will be the final battle. I know there's a whole other season, but this seems like the end of everything that we've been building. We've had such an amazing run for them too. Like they've been they've been doing better, so cohesive as a unit. The scouts are actually viewed as heroes by the country. Historia is queen. Eren is in a good place relying on his friends. So many great things are happening. And then like in a moment, it's all gone. And it seems like the monkey Titan or whatever his name is, is so, so calm about the whole thing. He just seems so far ahead of it. He's just watching complacently as the scouts go up in flames. And why, you know, and why? What is it all for? <laughs> if this is really Really the end of the scouts i hope erwin gets the truth he's looking for that would make me happy perfect game yeah the beast titan's playing a pretty good game right now is that a reference to his pitching right out in the open where he knows he's safer you don't want to know unclear Oh, God. He's got good aim. He's having a great time. It is baseball. Oh, no. It's awful. He comes from the land of canned food and baseball. Get out of there. I know his leg's broken, but... At this point, the horses are like, whatever. That was a nice touch, hitting the chapel. Yes. He has them exactly where he wants them. Unclear. I'll say. As terrible, as horrifying as the scene is, there's something so amazing about seeing Levi and Erwin talk like that. Like, everyone's panicking around them, and they're as calm as ever. This is definitely unlike anything they've ever seen, right? But these are the ultimate veterans. They have such a crazy amount of resolve and control. As bad as things are, I still believe that Erwin can pull something out. It's a war on two fronts. Oh no. Speaking of resolve, Bertholdt has also made up his mind. Oh, but I feel like even Eren. How do you fight the Colossal Titan? The, just the size of him. 
Yeah, this is the time. That's just not it. That's not gonna do it. Still impressive though. He just kicked Aaron into the wall. Oh no! Yeah, he got punted. That's your great hope for humanity, right there. This could turn out to be a huge moment for John John. Remember in the beginning, he was talking about not being fit to be a leader? Here we are. Massive pervert lord. Oh my god. Just a little bit too slow. I have no idea how the hell they're gonna beat this thing. Oh no. Armin, no. It hurts. No, what the hell? Man, that was such a great touch. Because just when you think you can't get any worse. <laughs> Reiner shows up. There are so many things to love about the sequence. I mean, just the, the magnitude of it, the music, the images, the stakes. One thing I really love about it is I feel like this is a defining moment for, for a lot of the, the cadets that we started with. John John started just not caring at all and trying to join the military police, right? And then joining the scouts and having issues with leadership and self-doubt. So for him to be this focused and to take command like that just feels so good. Then Mikasa, who was always sort of Eren first, is able to disregard Eren for the moment to participate in this coordinated attack. Sasha was somewhat selfish and also easily terrified, and she's still terrified, but it doesn't stop her. And Connie, Connie's always been the man, so. <laughs> Connie's just being Connie still, but all of them are less of individuals. I feel like without their conviction, the chain of command would have just evaporated. Oh, also Armin, this has been a long time coming for him, and I feel like this is his first really big test because he's being groomed as leader and here we are, but it's the, the ultimate challenge. And I'm wondering if there's something for him where like, this is a moment where some of his worst things, some of his worst traits, the road he was going down, was sort of thrown back in his face, you know? He has a, a capacity for manipulation. And he sort of wavered between a bunch of different ideas, but one thing we've seen him sort of flirt with is the idea that life is just all about survival, like that whole thing, that old chestnut. But there it seems like he feels responsible for what's happening with Bertholdt. He he somehow ended up giving Bertholdt the resolve to think clearly and carry out the plan without being provoked. And because of that, it feels like Armin lost something. He lost a point of confidence, which is interesting. He's playing a perfect game so far. I'll give it to him. I mean, he doesn't even need to guess. Yeah, they're panicking. Look at Marlo, though. Yeah, that was sort of my feeling earlier, too. Yeah, they're just speechless. Yeah, he's just saying what everyone's thinking, basically. For what he's saying, it's really easy for me to say this because I'm, I'm safe. I'm just an observer, but at least he died on his feet. If he dies, if they die, at least they die fighting for something they believed in. That, I think, is the antidote to this terrible world. People standing up and doing the thing that they think is right, even if they're just a limited, tiny human being. This may very well be the end of the scouts, but look how far they've made it because of that very thing. You know, it's just a couple small people that decide to risk themselves to correct the injustices that they see, or at least to honestly face the problems they see, because what most people are doing is burying their heads in the sand. And just a handful of people making that decision has led to all this. And so even if it doesn't pan out the way they want it to, in some ways, each of these soldiers has been more than most people could ever hope for. You know, they are special. They're special not because of the results of their decisions, but because of their decisions and because of what their decisions are tied to. His reaction is perfectly reasonable because they're on the on the verge of death, you know. But in my eyes, they're heroes one way or the other. They've succeeded and it's not over. In Erwin, we trust still at this late hour. The thing is, he is different, you know, he is different. Interesting question. Yeah, speaking of resolve and conviction. They got nowhere else to go but up then. <laughs> Told you to trust. For dramatic tension. 
ここにいる新兵と私の命を捧げればなお前の言う通りだ give, give your hearts one last time No, Erwin, you gotta make it to the basement そして私は真っ先に死ぬ地下室に何があるのか知ることもなくな Huh? He'll do it though Because that's just the kind of person he is このまま地下室に行きたい手を伸ばせば届くところに答えがある見えるか俺たちの仲間が捧げた心臓がどうなったか知りたいんだ It's a lot of responsibility It's a lot of people おかげで俺たちはここまでたどり着くことができた夢を諦めて死んでくれ神兵たちを地獄に導け Descent うわ Damn what a Amazing scene. The final temptation for a great man, for a near perfect man, <laughs> for all Irwin's talk about being selfish. I mean, I don't know. It seems like a story that got him started. I think he's so much bigger than that. The story was a focal point to give him the motivation to do the, the superhuman things that he's done. But in the process, he's risen into this role. He's become something so much more than just that angry child. But I feel like he has his answer. He's been validated already, even if he doesn't know the exact truth. In fact, I feel like the basement might invalidate some of his theories, but because he's been so principle driven, so values driven, he'll be right no matter what, you know? Like all he's done is fight back against threats, destroy massive lies, and give a whole group of people something to believe in. And so I feel like he's done more than live up to the, the expectations he set for himself. And I'm sure his father would be immensely proud. And Levi seems proud. I feel like this is sort of the resolution to all these these Levi questions. Maybe this is what Levi was looking for. Finally, it feels like they're on they're on even terms. They're like friends acknowledging each other. And Levi gave Erwin just one moment of a break from being ultimately responsible for everything, carrying the weight of the, the whole world on his shoulders. And it seems like that moment was enough to allow Erwin to get back to his old self. It's such a amazing scene. And that smile at the end was different from the smile on the wall. That felt like he's actually at peace. <laughs> The best flashback, the final Irwin speech flashback. The Titans. He formed a line, yeah. <laughs> and take them all out on your way too, while you're at it. No big deal. Oh, but Leo's gotta watch this happen. Many, many of you. Yes. Damn. is really a light in the darkness. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, man, Erwin. Ah, finally. It feels so good to hear a counter, a counter to the whole cruel world thing. Who else but Erwin? The beauty of that speech mixed with the tragedy of his death, it's a lot to take in. He's exactly right, I think. Erwin has transcended the, the limitations of the philosophy and worldview that everybody's putting forth. There's a cyclical nature to this whole thing where like, there's a natural cruelty to life. And then that just makes people wither. And the conclusion they come to is that, well, that's just the way it is. And so if the world's going to give me cruelty, I'm going to give cruelty back. But there's something so unsatisfying and somewhat weak and maybe even cowardly about, about that level of thinking because it's a surrender to circumstance. It's absolving oneself of responsibility in a way. And by surrendering like that and by taking on that thought, you end up becoming the evil that you hate. You know, you end up becoming the thing that caused you to get there in the first place. What's way harder and what I would say is heroic is to refuse refuse to participate in that cycle, to become someone who does not fall into that kind of despair, who does not perpetuate those evil things, and become someone better, even at great personal expense. And I think that's kind of the key. It's not the circumstances of your life, 
or your accomplishments or anything that is external to us that makes us great. It's whether or not we had the strength to do what we felt was right and we became someone who embodied values that if adopted would change the world. Even when that costs us dearly, even when that costs us circumstances. And I think on some level we all want that, it's just, it's just difficult. It's kind of terrifying to take that on because it means sacrifice. But I think that's why people gravitate towards someone like Erwin. That's why he's effective. I think the show's right about that. It started with him and he created the space for other people to be like that. And that's why he's able to make these speeches and have it be so impactful and meaningful to not just the characters of the show, but to us watching. It's a message that initially hurts, but ultimately is the best feeling. It just takes an acceptance of that role. Like, okay, I'm going to just do what I think is right and only what I think is right. Being connected to yourself in that way gives you something that no outcome could ever give. But it just so happens, I think, that having that view actually does lead to good outcomes. It does lead to good results. I think Erwin became the best possible Erwin, and the victory itself is not even his greatest gift or the greatest gift he gave to others, but it will lead to victory because of how powerful it is. Even if it's not this battle, it, it will happen because of something he started. That's the strength that he has. I knew Erwin was gonna die when he started reflecting on his feelings a couple episodes back, but this was the best possible ending I could have hoped for. First of all, him making the right decision, and secondly, he figured it out, I think. He figured out and destroyed the prevalent philosophy of this world. He is the antidote to this world, in my opinion. And now, with his death, my question is just, can people take that on and continue what he started? This is without a doubt my favorite episode of the show so far, and the arc's still going, so that's a good sign. So on to the next one.